Hello, dear friends. My name is Dr. Igor Atabekov. I am clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. Uh, we are continuing our topic on um, adjunctive methods on metabolic theory of cancer development and uh, metabolic approaches of uh, cancer treatment. Uh, what can be used uh, as adjunct for cancer patients? As we know, uh, our oncological, traditional oncological uh, approaches uh, have a lot of toxicities and uh, they are not always effective. Um, to be honest, we can cure just a few, um, very small number of patients. And of course, I'm always searching for something that can help those patients. If you did not see previous two videos, watch them, stop this video, uh, because you won't understand anything or your knowledge will be very incomplete and you cannot uh, use it in your situation. So today we are talking about other approaches. How else can we hit the tumor? Because the tumor is very good in surviving and we need to hit it from many different sides in order to win this battle. Let's get started. One more problem of tumor survival. For example, we have a patient whose tumor is very dependent on sugar and uh, doesn't really need gluten. We do keto diet, or the patient does uh, fasting and uh, drinks green tea, but the tumor still survives. Why? In these conditions of starvation, uh, the tumor will use its microenvironment. Tumor microenvironment is the topic of many, many plenty of investigations nowadays. All the oncologists, all the scientists, they agree that tumor microenvironment is a major factor of tumor survival. What is there in that microenvironment? Well, there are some cellular debris, some, I would say, proteins, the garbage, and uh, a lot of uh, immune cells, our immune cells, that, mm, I would say, they are cheated by tumor. Uh, they are behaving weirdly. They are helping the tumor to survive. For example, macrophages may help with cannibalism, they may eat this garbage, the other cells around, and provide the material for tumor. For example, provide with glutamine, uh, provide with uh, other amino acids, and uh, then the tumor may survive. For example, here, look, cells of glioblastoma, it's a very aggressive tumor of brain, survived in the conditions of starvation uh, because uh, there was lysosomal digestion of materials around the cell. Lysosomes are the sex uh, with, um, it's like small stomachs inside the cell, the sex uh, that contain uh, different enzymes and they will digest everything and decompose uh, the garbage or materials into smaller pieces, the blocks, blocks that tumor cell can uh, use for energy production, or for, uh, for example, uh, production of new proteins or DNA. But if we added chloroquine, it's anti-malarian drug, lysosomes were blocked and the tumor cells died very fast. Very interesting, anti-parasitic drugs. It's not a, because the tumor is parasite. Yeah, the tumor is parasite in some way because it's eating our, our food and it's not doing any function and it's damaging our body, but not some worms, for example. Yes, some worms can cause tumors, but only some. Mostly tumors are associated with other, uh, other causes. Camforst and, and uh, co-authors, they showed that pancreatic cancer also obtained glutamine through lysosomes by digestion of uh, different proteins around cells. So, in order to win the war against cancer, we need to block lysosomes. I have a separate video, it's the most popular video in my channel on antiparasitic drugs against cancer. If you didn't watch it, you can watch it. Uh, by the way, there are quite many, I couldn't say many, but there are some clinical trials uh, when they use antiparasitic drugs in addition to chemotherapy or radiation therapy uh, against uh, different tumors. Do you think if I was telling nonsense here, there would be some sponsors uh, sponsoring these clinical trials for humans? I don't think so. They check everything. Uh, there is a science on it and uh, there is a potential effect of these drugs for tumors. Next, I hear quite often, by the way, um, that a patient comes to me and says, 
Well, doctor, I had a cancer 15 years ago. It was treated, everything was fine, I was living a normal life, but now I, I get uh, metastasis everywhere. I say, why? Mm, did you have stress? You say, yes, I lost, for example, some of my close relatives. The thing is, we, very often we see this. Uh, their chronic or very severe stress may cause drop of immunity, increase in stress hormones, increase in blood sugar, increase in insulin and insulin-like growth factor 1. Um, by the way, these things may, can, can be opposed by keto diet, for example, the last things. But you need to work with stress. You need to work with your fighting mood. You must be ready to fight. You must say, I will win this. I will win this war. And you must work with your stress. All kinds of yoga, hypnosis, um, relaxing music, uh, other procedures, maybe prayers. It all may help uh, with uh, stress. And it's very important because uh, if the patient uh, says, oh, that's it, I will die, I have no chance, he will never uh, be healed. That's the rule. So this is the first step uh, every patient needs to take. Struggle with the stress. Struggle with his emotional state. Next, ketogenic diet can be used together with treatments. I was talking about chemotherapy before. The problem with those uh, clinical trials is that they used uh, intermittent fasting or keto diet, uh, with chemotherapy, it showed that the, those patients survived better this chemo, less side effects, but no uh, better responses to treatment. Why? Again, because we influence only one small part of uh, tumor survival mechanisms. We need to do it in complex. And radiation therapy plus keto diet may improve uh, their survival, their treatment results, uh, this is in mice. But radiation therapy can also damage the cells around, for example, in gliomas, in the tumors of uh, neural system, it will damage the mitochondria around. Uh, this mitochondria will give rise to new tumor, according to this metabolic theory, and uh, this uh, may lead to increased uh, risk of relapse. Also, especially if we use dexamethasone, Dexamethasone is a glucocorticoid hormone. It increases sugar, it uh, decreases immunity, and it's often given to patients to decrease allergies to chemotherapy, to decrease uh, nausea and vomiting, and to, in brain tumors, it will decrease the edema, a swelling of neural uh, tissue. That's why it's a very highly used drug, but has some problems. What else can we do? I told you that uh, cancer cells uh, don't want oxygen, and uh, our cells love oxygen. That's why uh, oxygen for cancer cells is just uh, free radicals, oxidative stress, and uh, damage to cells. And for our cells, it's uh, energy. That's why aerobic exercises, not severe exercises, just with high breathing, not too much, moderate. Walking outside in the forest, maybe doing some breathing exercises, uh, hyperbaric oxygenation or hyperbaric chambers uh, is a good option. Also, we can increase the oxidative stress of tumor by, for example, ozone therapy. I have a video on ozone against cancer. Uh, with um, vitamin C therapy, there are a lot of clinical trials nowadays against different tumors. Especially, it can be effective against KRAS tumors like pancreatic cancer or some uh, gut cancers. But you need very high doses. Dechloracetate is the separate topic. This will give these pulses. We talked about press pulse therapy, so we do press by starvation of tumor and pulses by uh, this oxidative stress. But again, this is all beautiful in theory, but we need more clinical trials to understand how we should use this complex um, correctly in every patient. And uh, maybe and most likely it will be individual to, other, to different types of tumors and patients. That's why still a long way to go. So, again, in order to cure cancer, according to metabolic theory, we need to do several things. First of all, we need to stop tumor by cutting down the food 
uh, we need to decrease lysosomal function so the tumor cannot uh, survive in these uh, conditions of starvation. We can do oxidative stress for this tumor. I'm talking about oxygen. And, of course, we need to have a consultation of oncologists. It's very important because all what I'm talking about is theoretical in many ways. Uh, yes, it has a lot of uh, science underneath. Uh, it has some uh, already practical data, but still it's not in protocols yet. And also every tumor and every patient is different. And uh, what is good for one is not good for another one. Dear friends, that's all for today. In the next videos, I will show you some cases of patients using this metabolic theory and metabolic approaches. I think it would be very interesting for you. If you want to support channel, please, there are links uh, under this video. You can also become our sponsor. And I would be happy if you write any comment under this video on your thoughts or your questions, or maybe you have some experience. I wish you good luck, God bless you, goodbye, and see you in the next video. Don't be afraid, doctor.